Rise to your feet and shout hallelujah. One more time, shout hallelujah. Father, we give you thanks. We exalt your holy name. There is no one like you. We bless your name. Thank you for another special Holy Ghost. Thank you for your servant, our daddy, Pastor E. Adeboye. Thank you for the gift of his life. And thank you for making a gift to the church and to the world in our generation. Thank you for preserving him. Thank you for strengthening him. Thank you for encouraging him. Thank you for watching over him. Thank you for his family. And thank you for today. Thank you for your love for us. I decree in the name that is above all name that shall be overflowing joy. In the life of everyone listening, there shall be overflowing joy. I take authority over all the powers of darkness and everything that holds men captive in sin, in darkness, in sorrow. I command that you be arrested in the name of Jesus. I command the prison gates open. And in the name of you that conquer death and hell, I release the captives in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God go forth as fire and hammer. Destroying every shackle of the devil. Setting people free. Healing the sick. Saving sinners. Giving faith to the people. Giving joy in the hearts of the people. Glory be to God. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. Please be seated. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. In St. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 to 11, the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, to all nations. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This joy shall reach your home. This joy shall fill your life. This joy shall overflow in your life. Why did God send joy to the world? The angel described Jesus as the joy of God given to the world. The fall of man into sin was the genesis of sorrow. Those who choose to live in sin have a daily harvest of sorrows. No matter how well you pretend, you can never have pure joy until you are free from every form of guilt. Every happiness a man can have, can ever have, from the proceeds of sin, always comes with a sad end, a troubled heart, and disquieted sleep. The wages of sin is death. Death is a debt we all owe because of our sin. And if you don't accept the Savior, then you face death by yourself. And for your information, death is not just an occurrence. Death is a spirit. And there is level one of death and there is level two of death which the Bible calls second death. Do not think that physical death is the end of death. No. It is the beginning and introduction to the other death for those who do not get their salvation from death. The Bible talks of an eternal death which will be the portion of everyone whose sin has not been forgiven. Revelation 21 
verse 4 says there is a day coming and God shall wipe away all tears from the eyes of all those that have been forgiven and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away may you be a partaker of this eternal freedom from death in the name of Jesus the only thing that can free a man from guilt and condemnation is justice. But if justice takes effect upon the guilty, he will be condemned. Therefore, God, in helping mankind, sent somebody into the world to face the judgment for our sin to be judged in our place and that person is Jesus and briefly I tell you this Jesus is the son given to mankind Isaiah 9 6 is a gift of God to the world he is called the mighty God everlasting father wonderful and counselor but in Isaiah 7, 14, Isaiah gives us a sign. When this son shall be born, he shall be distinguished by one sign. And that sign, he shall be born of a virgin, a young girl that has never had sexual intimacy with anybody. But David confirmed in Psalm 2, verse 7, Psalm 2, verse 7, when he said, a day is coming when God's appointed king, Messiah, and ruler shall be born in the world and he shall be called the Son of God. That's Psalm 2, verse 6 to 7. At the time when the child will come, God dispatched an angel called Gabriel, and Gabriel brought the information. To a, choi, a chosen virgin called Mary. And he told her in St. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 35. He said, Hail, young girl, you are favored. The girl said, What kind of greeting is this? He said, You have found favor with God. You will conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. And you will call the name of that son Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the most high God. Mary said, I don't know a man yet. How will this be? Say simple. The Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. And the holy being that shall be brought forth shall be called the son of God. So she became pregnant. When the boy intending to marry her saw the pregnancy he wanted to avoid her carefully and then the same angel came back and appeared to him and said Joseph that girl is not promiscuous she's carrying the child of the Holy Ghost take her in and protect her and don't touch her until she has brought forth Matthew 1 18 to 25 and he told him the name of the child shall be Jesus why he shall save his people from their sins the wages of sin is death if you die a sinner and you are not saved from your sin you will face death on your own death on level 1 and death on level 2 So Jesus was born. And then the angels came to announce his birth. 
in St. Luke chapter 2, verse 7 to 20. The angel said, in verse 10, Fear not, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all nations. Unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Go, you will find him. And because Jesus was born, now man shall live forever. But you have a choice whether to accept a savior or to face death by yourself. If you are willing to face death by yourself, make sure you can conquer death. Otherwise, you will go into eternal flames. I tell you about three men, four men, who had an encounter with the Savior. Two of them chose to be saved. No, two of them were saved. And two of them did not make use of the opportunity. So they faced death by themselves. The first person is Judas. He had three years of staying with Jesus, the Savior. But he was pilfering and stealing and lying to cover it up. He had three years of hypocrisy and putting up a bold, happy face to cover and to conceal a guilty heart. In St. John chapter 12, verse 6, the scripture says, this he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. And he kept the purse and managed the finances of the apostles. He kept on stealing. Jesus couldn't be bothered, but he had a last assignment. And when there was no more money to steal, he decided to betray Jesus. Even though Jesus warned him, one of you shall betray me. It would be better if he was not born. He couldn't be bothered. He went ahead, smiling and laughing as if there was nothing wrong. He collected 30 pieces of silver and gave up Jesus. Then, the line was drawn. Judas betrayed the Lord and discovered when it was too late that he had sold his soul unto destruction. Self-condemnation and shame did not allow him to go back and say, I'm sorry. He took his own life. When Jesus was arrested, after Judas handed him over, he got to the court of Pilate. Pilate said, in St. Luke chapter 23, verse 13 to 25, I have examined this man. That's verse 14. I cannot find any fault in him. I sent him to Herod. He did not find fault in him. Therefore, I will release him. The chief priest and the rulers said, No! So what do I do with him? They said, crucify him. He said, no. I bring Barabbas to you. A murderer, a thief, a drug boy, a troubler of the society, a kidnapper, an armed robber. Choose between this healer, this good man, this holy man, and this robber. The people said, release Barabbas. Crucify Jesus. He said, what has he done? They said, that's the way we want it. Do you know that Barabbas was released and Jesus, the innocent, was taken to the cross? Do you know that freedom can be yours? It doesn't matter what anybody has said about you. Today, Jesus will take your place. Barabbas returned home free. 
Jesus went to the cross bound. While on the cross, he was set between two robbers and thieves, murderers, kidnappers, armed robbers, drug boys, wicked fellows. And one of them looked at Jesus. The same Luke 23, verse 32 to 34. From verse 39, he said, Master, you are a miracle man. You are holy, you are innocent. What are you doing here with us? If you are truly Jesus, the Son of God, as you call yourself, and the Savior, as you call yourself, save yourself and take us out of this mess. The second one said, Ah, ah, don't you fear God? We are here because of the evils we have done. This man, for every day, put him there. Then he said, Master, I beg of you. I know you have a kingdom. I know you have power over death. I know you are a conqueror of death. Please, when you come to your kingdom, where there shall be no more death, where there shall be no more crying, where there shall be no more sorrow, please remember me. Who is this robber who still recognizes Jesus on the cross? And Jesus said to him, Verily I said to you, Today, not tomorrow, you will be with me in paradise. Gentlemen and ladies, Judas, seeing that he had done terrible evil and unwilling to make amendments, he took the money back to the chief priest in the morning before Jesus was put on the cross. They said, sit to eat. He poured the money. He went away. He hung himself. Judas put himself to death. That same morning, Barabbas was released a criminal in place of Barabbas. Jesus was committed to death. That same morning, while Jesus was on the cross, another robber told Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus said, today, not tomorrow, you will be with me in paradise. The second robber said, if you are truly genuine, save yourself. I want you to choose whether you want to be the Judas or you want to be the second thief who insulted Jesus. Or you want to be Barabbas who committed all the crimes but was forgiven because Jesus replaced him. Or you want to be the thief on the cross who was just five minutes away from hell and he was diverted to paradise. Jesus did not come to condemn the world but he came that everybody in the world can be saved. No matter how dirty, no matter how bad, no matter how terrible, no matter how long, no matter the situation, Jesus is ready to pay your price. I recommend to you today, the man who conquered death, who raised the dead after four days from the grave, who himself died and rose from the dead, the man who is alive and has gone to heaven. The man who is coming back. The man who has paid the price with his own life that you may not perish. If you are under the sound of my voice and you need forgiveness, I am going to give you the opportunity to come and be forgiven. Why should you go into eternal flames when there is a redeemer, a savior, a conqueror that has chosen to face death for you. So if you are under the sound of my voice, no matter how guilty you are, no matter how bad you are, you don't want to face death by yourself, you have no power to face death. I recommend to you, the one who destroyed death by dying and rising from the dead, his name is Jesus. The only man who lived a holy life 
who never committed sin. He was never a liar. He was never a criminal. He was perfect and pure. Yet, he chose to die. Let us pray. Let us pray. For only those who want to be forgiven. They don't want to be caught dead with their sin. They want to be given free entrance to paradise. They want Jesus to face death for them. So if you know you need to be forgiven, start coming now. And if you are coming, come quickly. I will count one to ten. I appeal to you. Don't waste this opportunity. Don't waste this opportunity. Judas went to hell because he chose to keep his sin and to cover it. If you want to be forgiven, start coming. One, thank you. And come quickly. Come quickly. Don't allow your life to be wasted in sin. Keep coming. Thank you. Please, if you are able to run, run. If you are not able, walk fast. Keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Come and give him your life. Come and be forgiven. Come and be forgiven. He died to take away your sin. He died to face death for you. You cannot face death for yourself. Allow him to take away your sin. Two, please keep coming. If you want to come, keep coming. Thank you. Come and be forgiven. No other person can forgive you. Only Jesus. And those of you who are listening online, you want to surrender your life to Christ, do it right away. If you are able to run, please run. Keep coming. It's time to hand your life over to Jesus. It's time to be forgiven. It's time to accept the only man that can deliver from sin. The only one that conquered sin. The only one that conquered death. Three, please keep coming. Keep coming. I know you are coming from far. I see you coming. Find your way through. We are waiting for you. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. It's time for you to be forgiven. If you are not forgiven, there is no way you will escape death in eternal destruction. But once you are forgiven, it's over. Five. Please keep coming. We are already halfway. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. The Lord is out here to forgive you. He's out here to set you free. He's out here to conquer death for you. Five. I repeat again. Keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Just keep coming. You are ready to be forgiven. You want to be forgiven. The thief on the cross said, Master, remember me in your kingdom. And as you come, begin to pray. And begin to ask the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me. As you forgive that man, thank you. Just keep coming. Six. Thank you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Just keep coming. I know you are coming from very far. I can see you. Just keep coming. Seven. I'm holding on for you. I see you coming. Just keep coming. We are not going to, we are not going to shut down until you are here. We are just waiting for you. Eight. Eight. Just keep coming. Thank you. Just keep coming. Thank you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Double up if you are able to. If you are not, just keep walking. We'll wait for you until you get here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have to be forgiven today. And your life will never remain the same again. Your life will never remain the same again. Shall we all rise up to pray as they are coming? Let's all rise up to pray. Everybody rise to your feet. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. Brethren, it was quite a price that Jesus paid that you and I 
may not face death. If after Jesus has paid so much price, we go back and begin to embrace our sin, you will have to face death by yourself. Jesus said, Those who come to me, I will never cast out. And whosoever shall call on my name shall be saved. So we are going to call on the name of Jesus for these ones and for yourself. That the saving power of Jesus will destroy every yoke of sin in your life, in our lives. Everybody say with me, Jesus! I call on your name. Save me, O Lord, from the power of sin. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Those of you who are coming, join them. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you who are out here, say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me to take away my sin. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe with all my heart you are the Son of God. You died for me, taking my sin with you on the cross and you rose from the dead. I confess today that you are my Lord. Jesus is Lord in my life. I receive forgiveness for all of my sins in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Place your hand on your head. I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven you. In the name of Jesus, the dominion of death over your life is destroyed. In the name of Jesus, sin shall not have dominion over your life. In the name of Jesus, eternal life will abide in you. Father, let their names be written in the book of life. Father, I pray for all your children under the sound of my voice. Anyone struggling with the chain of sin, whom the enemy is trying to take back to hell, let that chain be destroyed today. Father, let the spirit of Judas not rest upon anyone. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. And thank you for this great salvation. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. Let me hear three powerful amen. Please, your names will be taken so that daddy will continue to pray for you. And I can assure you, you will not go to hell by the grace of God. Give the Lord a clap offering.